Okay. Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Frank Scholte. I work at JTeam uh, from Amsterdam. Uh, we're a so software development company doing uh, m mostly projects um, related to search, uh, CMS uh, stuff. And uh, for a while ago, I started researching uh, Mahout. And um, at least uh, the, the collaborative filtering part of it. And I'm now going to give you an introduction on it, uh, on some of the ideas behind it and uh, how you can use it with uh, Mahout. Uh, so first, the uh, agenda. Um, I will give a quick introduction of uh, some of the concepts. I will explain Mahout and uh, the taste framework um, in it and give you an overview of uh, the architecture of taste, uh, some of the algorithms, and how to evaluate d um, multiple algorithms uh, and at the end, there's some time for questions for you. Okay, so um, um, there are a lot of recommendation engines on the web these days. Uh, you have uh, Amazon, StumbleUpon, YouTube, all these uh, sites in there. I'm, I'm sure every one of you has uh, been to um, one of these at least. And uh, it's becoming ver um, very well uh, used. So um, I think it will be interesting to see how you actually build w one of those things. This is where uh, Mahout comes in. Uh, just a quick reminder, Mahout is, uh, is a machine learning library for um, Java. It's a Apache license, Apache project, and uh, it's, it's supposed to run on uh, Hadoop to uh, scale to very large data sets. In this presentation, though, I'm uh, going to explain how to run it on like smaller or medium-sized uh, data sets. And in, the, in the next talk by uh, Sean Owen, uh, he will show you how to uh, run really large data sets. Um, so machine learning is a very uh, wide area. And Mahout supports like three main uh, components. First is uh, it's collaborative filtering uh, inside the test framework. And with this, you can do recommendations. Second part is clustering, N not to be confused with uh, the, the clustering of servers, but, but to uh, identify patterns within a, a data set, like groups of users that share some characteristics. And th the third part you can, uh, y you can use is classification. Like, for instance, you can uh, um, detect spam in emails, and that's actually what Yahoo uses uh, as well. Okay, to start off, if you want to do recommendations, you, of course, have some users and some items, and you want to recommend items to users. Um, what's, what in what's interesting here is that items can also be other users. So you could, you could have a dating site, for instance, that recommends users to other users. And um, it's, it's also that um, an item is just a black box because you're not really uh, looking at uh, the item itself, but only you're looking at at the preferences of users for specific items. So, um, what's I what's important here is that there are there, there are two different ways to uh, to have preferences. Uh, you can have explicit preferences. In this case, you have a user that uh, rates a certain book, for instance, with a certain number of stars. Um, and but on the other hand, you can have implicit preferences when a user, uh, for instance, clicks on an item on a website, which gets recorded, and that's an implicit preference. So it, these these two are different, and also uh, um, the data you you have, the 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 preference you have, uh, they determine which kind of algorithms you can use. So you have to be you have to be careful of uh, what what kind of preferences you uh, are dealing with. Second. Uh, distinction is you have two ways to do recommendations. So the first one is item-based recommendation. In this case, you start out with uh, a given item, for example, a book, and then you, then you will find out uh, what uh, other users, um, what, what kind of books they read that also have read this book. And uh, what's important here is that uh, the, the recommendations you, you get from this uh, w way of doing it is the recommendations are not uh, they're not personalized because 
they are related to a single uh, book in, in this case. But if you do want to have personalized recommendations, you have user-based recommendation. And this works uh, in the following way. You, uh, for, for a given user, you first look for other users that have sort of the same taste. And then you can, uh, as recommendations, you can get the items of the other users. And you do this by determining a user neighborhood. So this user neighborhood consists of users that share a similar taste. And you need, to, you need to compute this neighborhood first, and then you can get recommendations. OK, so a little bit about the architecture of taste. Of course, you, st you start out with uh, your preferences. Um, they can be stored in a CSV file, for instance. So you have, on the, well, I'm actually in front of it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, here on the on the bottom left, you have uh, you have your you have your preference file. So you have uh, uh, a user ID, an item ID, and a preference value for explicit preferences in, in this case. But you could also leave out the preference value, of course. Then uh, this data will be put in the data model. Uh, this is an abstra abstraction for taste and with a, with a data model, you can um, find out all sorts of things about your data, like how many users are in there, how many items. You can get the preferences from a certain user, all that stuff. And with that, you can run, you can run an algorithm on, on top of that to determine which items are similar to uh, others or which users are similar to others. So, and this is done by, with uh, item similarity or user similarity. Once you have, the, you have these two components, you um, have to hook them up in a recommender, and then you can just recommend uh, items. Uh, one thing that's important in the similarity is that, uh, in general, it will iterate over each pair of items or each pair of users and perform uh, a, a calculation and will result in, 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 a, in a score. And, and uh, these scores are then stored when you do recommendations, you just look for the highest scores, obviously. So that's just a general idea how, how it works. Uh, a little bit more in detail, you have um, uh, preference objects are um, really simple. They just consist of a user ID, item ID, and a value. Uh, they're all op optimized to uh, not use f very much memory. So uh, in the past, Maud used to have a user and an item I interface, but Later, it was refactored to use only only longs to save some space, and um, so so you have these preferences or a preference array, and you can just uh, store them memory quite e e uh, efficiently. Next, the data models. There are different implementations for it. Uh, for instance, the file data model uh, just reads the CSV file, and it loads the entire uh, structure into memory, and while it uh, and uh, one, one other thing that's important is that it uses update files. So suppose you're reading a CSV file, and then later you have some new preferences. You can just add this file into the same directory called refresh, and the uh, file data model will uh, read, the, read the new preferences, and it will update uh, it uh, in internally. Uh, another thing you can do, of course, is uh, to sort them in the database with a generic JDBC data model or a MySQL data model. Uh, one thing I noticed is that for that it, uh, this this can be bad for performance because you you have to do a lot of queries to get all the uh, all, all the preferences from the, from the database. And um, um, if you if if you can fit your data in memory, which is not always possible, it's better because uh, once everything is loaded in memory, it's of course way faster than if it has to go back to the database every for every single call. So, okay. Um, now, for uh, s here are some similarity algorithms in uh, taste. There are. Uh, I think around uh, around a dozen. I didn't even mention them all, them all here. But uh, what's important to know is that uh, they produce different results. So it, they they are not s sorting algorithms that produce the same result, um, but they have different pros and cons and different uh, performance characteristics. And um, uh, I'm, I'll be explaining the top two of them. 
um, in more detail. So the first is the Tanimoto coefficient similarity, which is uh, a quite easy uh, similarity. Suppose we want to uh, define the similarity between two items. We can say we divide the number of users that prefer both items and divide them by the number of users preferring uh, I either A or B. So the intersection of the, of, of the set of uh, preferences divided by the exclusion of the set of preferences. And you can do the same for if you want to compare users. Then you have to you have to uh, count the number of items and do then do this uh, computed ratio. Um, this has actually been widely used in chemo informatics to de to determine similarity between molecules. That's that's where it, where it, where it comes from. You can apply the same thing for I implicit preferences or explicit preferences. It, it doesn't really matter because it only looks at the uh, number of preferences. Second is uh, log likelihood similarity, slightly more involved. And uh, from what I understand of it, the idea is that you have two hypotheses. First hypothesis is that uh, you say items are similar. Second hypothesis is that they're not similar. And then uh, with a likelihood calculation, you, you, you compute the likelihood of items being similar as opposed to not being similar, uh, as opposed to just being uh, um, uh, just by chance that they're, um, that it's more likely that they're just, uh, uh, that, they're not, that they're not similar. Um, if you, if you want to know more about this, you can uh, look up the paper by, uh, by Ted Dunning on this. Okay, so another thing you can do is you can you can pre-compute similarities. So um, you have a, a MySQL JDBC item similarity. You can, for example, first load your uh, data model uh, in memory using a file data model, for instance, and then you can you can iterate over all uh, users or items and store them uh, in a in a database and use it later on. And these two classes below the item item similarity, user user similarity are used to uh, actually work with these uh, in, in memory. Okay, so and now if you want to use your recommender, it's really quite easy. So on the top you have an uh, item-based item, item -based recommender and you, you can call the most s similar items uh, method with a given item ID and a number of recommendations and it, it will give you a list of recommended items which are just item IDs plus the item similarity score. And of course you can do the same with the user-based uh, recommender. It's almost the same, you call the recommend method for a given user and the number of recommendations. So it's really uh, quite easy. Of course then you, have, you, you, you only have the item IDs back so you still need to fetch your object from somewhere. Okay, so a little bit more on recommenders. Um, of course, you have user and item based recommendation. It also has refresh logic that if you call refresh, it will first refresh the data model to, for example, look for update files, and then it will run the similarity again. Uh, and then your uh, entire recommender is updated and you can just get more recommendations. Um, you can also directly access the data model from the recommender from maybe so, uh, to find out some statistics on it. So. And there's also a recommended because feature. You can find out why a given item was recommended to you. Okay, the next um, subject is how to evaluate algorithms. Uh, suppose you have a uh, data set on the, on the left, your original data set. And how you're going to evaluate this is you you take like a sample of the of your of your data set with an evaluation evaluation percentage. You could also just use the entire data set, of course. Um, then it gets split into a training set and a test data set, and you use the training set that uh, training data set on um, on a given re recommender, which uses the algorithm you want to test. Next, you take a, uh, a user and an item from the test data set and you ask the recommender to estimate a preference for you. And the idea is that you will then look uh, for the difference between the actual 
and the SMA preference. And of course, you want this uh, difference to be as small as possible. And um, the recommender actually, how, how it estimates a preference, it, it will look at all the other items a certain user has, and it will, it will calculate a weighted sum of the item similarities by a preference, and divide it uh, by the sum of item similarities. And that will be the estimated preferences. Um, you, you can do this in, in two different ways at the moment. You can use average absolute difference. Uh, which will uh, which will only look at the difference. It will add them all up and uh, um, divide them by the number of items in this in the in the in the test set. Of course, you can also use root mean square, and this means that you first square a difference before adding them, them all, adding, them, adding them all up and computing the average, and w which is slightly more more strict. Um, in order to do this, you need of course an evaluation percentage, a training percentage and some classes to uh, build your recommender uh, in order to use the training set. And also a data model builder to uh, create a training set and the original data model. Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna show you a little demo. I made a few helper classes for uh, doing ev evaluations. And um, the idea is to also extend this with uh, evaluation of implicit uh, preferences and to make it easy to, for a given data set, evaluate some algorithms on it and get, a, and, and get an idea of what are, what are some good ones for this particular data set. Okay, so. Dragging it over. Is this readable? Yeah? Okay, so um, I've got a spring context here. Um, below you can see uh, a, file, a file data model which is wired with um, um, a CSV file. I used the movie lens data set, which is uh, uh, a, a free, free data set of movie uh, preferences. This one contains 100,000 100, preferences. And on uh, the few, the few beans you see on top are uh, likely log likelihood and telemotor coefficient similarity <laughs> using this data model. And what we now, we, we can do um, an evaluation. Where's my mouse? Uh. Yeah. Um, okay, so you can see here in, at the top, I first, um, get all the beans from the from the context of course and here i have an evaluation runner which i pass an evaluation percentage of uh, one so it, it uses the entire set because it's just a small data set anyway and a, a training percentage of uh, 0.95 and i pass in the data model on the right and um, recommender evaluation utils which is just a, a helper class to make it easy for creating a test data set and training set and all. Then I create the two different evaluators. So the average absolute difference and the root mean square. And here below I, I run four different evaluations and I print out the summary here. I already, already ran this uh, demo. Unfortunately, it's, it's below the screen. Yeah, you can uh, you can see it here. That um, in, in in the log you can see that it does all, all the different evaluations. And you can see here the different scores for the in in this case the log likelihood, uh, root mean square, average absolute difference, and um, you can see the different values. Let's see in this case. Uh, 
log likelihood is slightly better than the tiny motor coefficient similarity, but uh, in the other case here, tiny, tiny motor coefficient is slightly better for the average absolute difference. So, um, of course, this is not a, this is not an actual 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 data set. I mean, it's um, it's uh, from the movie lens data set, but uh, it's a very small one. I think if you if you use a real data set, you have to uh, look at look at that. Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is almost the end. <coughs> um, yeah, if you would like to learn more about uh, Mahout, uh, one thing I can recommend is. Uh, Mahout in Action, which is which is uh, an early access book, and uh, it, con it contains a few chapters on recommendation engines, also some of the other other parts in uh, Mahout. Uh, of course, the main list is also very uh, very active, so uh, you could check that out. And of course, uh, the JTeam blog. I've been uh, uh, running a few blogs on Ma on Mahout, and I will continue to do so in the future. So you could check that out, and um, so. That's it, I think. Uh, any questions? Yeah? Um, I haven't used this in a project yet. This, this is like a... Um, I'm I'm doing this research uh, on the side, sort of, yeah, sort of an add-on to the search features we already do, and uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Where's the collaborative factor? Uh, yeah, that is something you use if you if you run it on Hadoop, and uh, Sean will give a talk um, on it. It's a, it's a next talk, so this is like if you want to run it on small to medium data sets, but if you re really want to scale it up, you have to use that. So for those of you who are interested, I would recommend staying here. Yeah? Yeah, that, yes, you, uh, okay. So the question was if you have to do incremental refreshes. And in general, most of the algorithms, you do have to calculate everything all over again. But there's one exception, uh, the slope one algorithm, because it uses uh, basically the average difference between preferences for two items. And uh, you, you can do this incrementally because, it's an, uh, because it keeps an average inside a huge matrix and that can be updated on the fly. So then, you, so then you don't have to do the entire calculation all over again. But the trade-off is that you have to build this matrix at the start, and it will take a while. But once it's up, then you can uh, inc incrementally update it. So that's the uh, idea. But in, yeah, in general, you do need to update the entire, the in, the entire thing. And that's also where Hadoop comes in. If your data set is really, really big, you need to to use that to uh, solve this problem. Yeah? Okay, so the question was, what happens if you have new items coming in to the system? Uh, let me see. So you mean that I already have a system where you can add explicit ratings, and then another item comes in without ex without explicit ratings? Yeah, that's you cannot really mix those. So what you could do then is have two different recommenders, but I I don't really know uh, how how you can combine them. I do think that you have to have two. D different instances of, of these recommenders because the algorithms don't really blend or something. So, yeah, that's uh, something what you have to do, I think, yeah. Yeah? Uh, 
is the domain of preference values a factor recommended? What do you mean by domain? Uh, I don't think it matters. No, no. Yeah. In general, uh, I mean, wh what you often see on a web is like a star rating between one or five stars, but it, it, it doesn't really matter. I think. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, what does the training look like in detail? Um, uh, okay, what it, what, it, what it actually does, if, if you have an item in the test set and you ask the recommender to estimate a preference for you, it will look for that user for all its other items and then it will compute a weighted score of all the item similarities with the weight being the preference values for those item similarities. And it, it will divide that sum by uh, the sum of item similarities. And that will be your estimated preference. So it just uses the, the other uh, values that are known from the, from the training set. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, I think this is it. Thank you.